right, we're going to look at something called an A invariant subspace. So if you think again of what a subspace is, you have this entire space, and a subspace is some, some part of that overall space. So a subspace S is said to be A invariant if the matrix S0 formed from a basis of that subspace satisfies this relationship. A times S0 is equal to S0 times M for some square matrix M. Okay, so here we're assuming A is N by N, S0 is N by R, and M is R by R. Okay, so the, the, that's, those are the dimensions of this. So I have this relationship. Now, if I look at this relationship, and if I, if I were to replace this S0 with V, eigenvector matrix, we have AV is equal to V times something, right? So the eigenvector relationship satisfies this kind of property, but there are other things that also satisfy this property. So we're going to look at some of the implications of an A-invariant subspace, uh, the relationship of this concept of an A-invariant subspace to eigenvalues and eigenspaces, and also we're going to look at obtaining a, what's called a block triangularizing transformation using an invariant subspace like this. All right, so the columns of S0 in, are, are in the subspace, and if we look at the columns now of A times S0, well, since A times S0 is equal to S0 times A, that means the columns, the individual columns here, are in fact in the sub same subspace. So that's the concept of an A invariant subspace. I start in the subspace S, and I end up in the subspace S. So it's kind of like a projection, a projection onto its own space. A is the projection, so that's the thing that's different is that A is the projection, okay? So it's, but A is in general not a projection, right? A in general is not a projection. It does not satisfy the relationship that A squared is equal to itself, okay? So, so it's clear that there's this very special relationship going on here, okay? So the, the concept of A invariance is that I take some vectors from the subspace, I operate them on, the, on them by A, and I, I end up with vectors in the same subspace. All right, so again, the basis vectors S0 satisfies this relationship, okay? For these, these are the dimensions of that, and in general, R is going to be less than or equal to N, in general, not necessarily, okay? Um, but since, since it is a base set of basis vectors, then it, it will satisfy this, okay? Okay, so it turns out you can have other R's, that R, so that R is greater than M, but in that case, it's no longer a base set of basis vectors. The S0 is not a set of basis vectors. So for a set of basis vectors, this, this must be satisfied. Now, since it is a set of basis vectors, then this relationship is satisfied. S0 transpose S0 determinant is positive. Okay, And so because of that, we can define the pseudo inverse of S0. So here's the pseudo inverse of S0. S0 transpose S0 inverse, quantity inverse times S0 transpose. And I can go through and look at this relationship. I multiply this relationship on the left by S0 pseudo inverse. I'm sorry. I multiply this relationship yeah, uh, by the S0 pseudo inverse on the left. And I can go through and show that S0 is S0 pseudo inverse is in fact a left inverse of S0. That is, S0 pseudo inverse times S0 is the identity matrix. So by multiplying this on the left by S0 pseudo inverse, I get S0 pseudo inverse A S0, and on, and on the other side I just get M. So I can solve for M in, in this relationship. So this, this allows me to, if I, if I know what S0 is and I know what A is, I can find M through this formula. Okay, so in general, an A invariant subspace is not a random space for a system. It is, in fact, closely related to an eigenspace. So, in fact, if we let V be non-zero uh, as, as an eigenvalue of A associated with lambda, AV is equal to lambda V, and we let S be the span of that vector, then X in that space is equal to A times X 
which is a times x is equal to lambda times x. That is, it's a multiple of that vector, right? A multiple of that vector is in the subspace. So it starts in the subspace, it ends in the subspace. So this is true for an eigenvector, okay? This is true, this relationship, uh, this a invariance relationship uh, it holds true for eigenvectors. So now suppose S is a collection of eigenvectors. Suppose now S, instead of just being the span of one vector, is now the span of k vectors. Okay, a linear combination of uh, these k vectors. So where all of them are non-zero and all of them satisfy this eigenvalue eigenvector relationship. Now for any x in this linear combination subspace, that means again there's a linear combination. There are some coefficients a1 to ak such that x is a linear combination of those vectors for some constants. And so now if I take a times x, that's a times this quantity, this sum, I can distribute a through this sum and I get this sum. And notice that each of these terms is a times an eigenvector. Okay, all the way down, an a times the eigenvector. And so a times eigenvector is a is the eigenvalue times the eigenvector. And so no, notice now I have this is just a scalar quantity, and all of this then is a linear combination of the eigenvectors. And so this linear combination of the eigenvectors is in the same subspace. Okay, so I started in the subspace, I end in the same subspace. So I have that relationship. So again, let S be a collection of eigenvectors, and let capital S be the a matrix of those eigenvectors. Then we can show that AS is equal to S times M, where M is this diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. Okay, so we have, in this case, we actually know exactly what M is, and in fact, it's a diagonal matrix. Notice that this is, this is not the same as AV is equal to V times lambda, capital lambda, because in, the, in this case, I only have K of the eigenvectors. I don't have the full set, okay? But I still get a diagonal matrix and it's just, it has just a subset of the eigenvalues dependent on the subset of the eigenvectors that were used in, in the process of making this. So backing up again to S0 so that I have A times S0 is equal to S0 times M, suppose that W is an eigenvector of M. So we have this relationship. We looked at what happens if we looked at eigenvectors of A. What happens now if we look at eigenvectors of M? Okay, so in this case, so there's some lambda such that that's what this guy means. There exists lambda such that m times w is equal to lambda times w. So it satisfies an eigenvector relationship with m. Okay. Now, since S0 is a basis, then um, a linear combination of the columns, it cannot be zero since it is a basis, since they're linearly independent. And so this quantity, S0 times W, cannot be zero. Since W was not zero, any non-zero linear combination of a set of basis vectors will not be zero. And so this vector is not zero. So in general, W will be uh, you know, of dimension K, uh, and V will be of dimension N, where K is less than or equal to N. And so S0 is a, is a what's called a dilation. It's a matrix that transforms from a lower dimension space to a higher dimension space, but it does so in a way that guarantees we will not get zero coming out. All right, so if we look now at S0 M times W, well, M times W is lambda times W. So if I move the lambda over to the other side, I have S0 times W, which is what we call V. So that's this, side, that's this side of the equation multiplied by w. Now if we look at this side of the equation multiplied by w, a s0 times w, well s0 times w is what we call v, and so we have this relationship. a v is equal to lambda v. Okay, so what this says is that if lambda is an eigenvalue of m, then lambda is also an eigenvalue of a, and the eigenvectors are related. So, so we have that 
we, we have seen that eigenvalues of A are related to eigenvalues of M. Now we've seen the eigenvalues of M are related to the eigenvalues of A. So every eigenvalue, this implies that lambda is an eigenvector of A associated with lambda. And so this means that every eigenvalue of M is an eigenvalue of A. Okay. Now suppose that W with non-zero determinant uh, gives the Jordan form of M. So, so suppose that M is not diagonalizable, but in, it, it's a Jordan form. So that is we have something like this, MW is equal to W times lambda, where here lambda is not a diagonal matrix, it's a Jordan matrix. I'm going to define V to be S naught times W. So again, this is similar to what we had before. And I look at this, S naught M times W. Well, M times W is equal to W times capital lambda. But S naught times W is V. And similarly, if I take this equation, uh, the original equation, and multiply on the right by W, so S naught M is equal to A S naught. So I multiply by W, this is V. And so I have A V is equal to V times lambda. This implies that the columns of V form an eigenspace of A associated with the Jordan block capital lambda. So in this case, in general, V will not be square, but we still have this relationship. So that's significant. So basically, anytime you have an A invariant subspace, it's associated with some eigenspace of the matrix A. All right. So what can we do with this information? Well, so suppose now that S1 is a matrix formed as from the basis of the the, the perp space of so the subspace S. The a, so S here is an A invariant subspace. We're going to look at the perp space of that. So S then, we're going to form the matrix is S0 and S1. And because it's, the base, it's from a basis of the orthogonal complement, then this is going to be a square matrix, and it's going to have non-zero determinant. Remember, S0 was a basis. And so S1 is now a basis. And so these are linearly independent with respect to each other. These are linearly independent with respect to each other. And now, since these come from um, orthogonal subspaces, they are definitely not linearly dependent on each other. So this whole matrix is non-singular. And so I'm now going to define T to be equal to S inverse, which is T0 and T1. We can go through and show some of these standard properties. I've actually shown these in a number of different situations. So for example, ST is equal to S0 T0 plus S1 T1. So I have this matrix broken up according to column, blocks of columns. This is broken up in terms of blocks of rows. And when I multiply these two together, I get the identity matrix. So I can go through and show that actually each of these products is, an, is a projection. Okay, and the sum of these projections is an identity. So when, whenever you have a sum of projections that adds up to the identity, you have what's called a resolution of the identity. So that's one property I have with S and T. So that's multiplying S and T this way. If I change the order now, T and S, then I'm going to have, here's T, here's S, multiplying it all out, I get this. But this is an identity. And so this is an identity of this form. This is going to be identity of dimension R. This is going to be an identity of dimension N minus R. And so I have these four equations. T naught S naught is equal to this identity. T naught S one is zero. T one S naught is zero. T one S one is this identity. Okay. So we have these relationships that come out. And so now if we look at this relationship, S A S inverse, which is T A S, that's T A times S naught S1, multiplying through by A. I get T times A S naught A S1, but I know that A S naught is equal to S naught times M. Okay, that's the, that's the uh, A invariant subspace property. And so I can now multiply this out and I get this matrix. And I notice that T naught times S naught is an identity. T1 times S naught is zero. So this matrix simplifies down to this. Okay, notice that this does not sim these do not necessarily simplify, but these two simplify. Okay, so what this gives us then 
is something called a block triangularizing transformation. That is, this is a, like an upper triangular matrix. That is, I have zeros down here below the diagonal. And so I have two diagonal square blocks, and these, these square blocks then are, um, are, so this is important. The important thing is we get these zeros down here. Okay, so block triangularizing transformation. So the invariant subspace then leads to an A invariant subspace. And we're going to use this property later when we come to looking at um, some de uh, further decompositions of systems. So uh, in, in terms of summary, a similarity transformation can be used to change the coordinates into states that are more purposeful. A system with a diagonal A matrix makes the analysis of the system simpler and a block triangularizing transformation can be obtained for any A invariant subspace. So those are the things that we've gleaned from this.